Hey everyone, Michael here. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the brand new market oracle indicator. This is a big one and at some times it can be too powerful for trading view. So we're going to break it down so you guys can make consistent profits while either trading it to find trends or using it to find possible reversals. All right, so when you guys first get this thing onto your chart, you're going to notice that nothing pops up. That's because this is actually too powerful. So you're going to see this little red exclamation point. And when you guys click on it, it'll say study error. Memory limits exceeded that study allocates 1.2 times more than allowed. It basically means the indicator is just too powerful for trading view, but this is a quick fix. I want you guys to go over here to settings. Now, I want you guys to scroll down until you hit this section right here called support resistance settings. What you're going to do is you're going to click on this one hour here and change this into a one day and the four hour you're going to change into a one week. And then once you hit OK, you're going to see the indicator pop up here after it's able to readjust from trading view. Trading view is going to scan it and say, OK, it's not using so much memory. Now we can put it up on here. OK, so now you guys are looking at a dynamic reactor, which you guys can consider a, a level of support and resistance. And you guys can see there are possible reversal zones because this at default is set to reversal mode. OK, now a lot of you guys are going to see this reversal mode and say, hey, wow, this looks like a great opportunity for me to short buy short buy right or uh, buy again here or short right here for a nice move on the downward side you can do that but primarily the way i like to trade this using uh bitcoin or ethereum or you know apple or forex pairs like the euro versus the dollar primarily guys i like to use this as scale out levels so let's say i open up a short down here because we were having a banking crisis I would look to scale out partially of my position over here or sell sell all of it outright, okay? Now, I usually like to scale out and not sell everything out at the right uh, the same time, but you guys can see right here, maybe we had a change of character which would probably have shown up um, probably right here, yeah, broken out above that resistance level right around, let's use a smiley face. We could have bought right around here. I know we didn't catch the bottom, but that's fine. All right, or you guys could have looked at the 200, um, the 200 daily moving average here. And that might have been an opportunity for you guys to buy right there if you guys have to use the moving averages. All right. But you guys bought right there and you guys are looking for an opportunity to scale out. Well, if you scaled out right here, this is still a really good opportunity because for the next few days, we did end up coming back down and you guys might have hit some of your other stop losses out there. And so if you do that, you guys are going to have much more uh, greater opportunities to lock in those profits. I think a big problem these days is people don't like to lock in their profits because they think that it's going to keep on going forever and ever and ever. And well, of course, on this opportunity, it did keep on going up after you went long right here. It after it gave you the reversal up, it did not keep on going down if you guys were shorting it. OK, same over here. Kept on going up a little bit higher, even though this was actually a pretty good zone. It did end up coming down lower on this one. Right. So. You know, just yeah, give this one a chance. I like to use it more for scaled opportunities. But if you guys find a lot of success using this as opening uh, bids for going short or long, keep on doing it. But make sure you guys do the proper back testing. OK, afterwards, I'm going to move us over here to the trend mode. This is the the big kahuna of a uh, big kahuna of this, of this particular indicator here. And I'm going to go over here to trend mode. Now, once this thing loads up here, you guys are going to see it's going to get rid of these possible reversal downs and reversal ups. What we're going to have instead is trends, so strong downtrends like this, strong uptrends like this, and these are usually what people will look for when making a buying opportunities, okay? To fix this up, though, what I'm going to do is recommend these settings here. If you guys like to trade on the daily chart or the four-hour chart, you guys are going to have the trend sensitivity set to 70, and the agility down here is set to 40, okay? Now, if you guys like to day trade on the 15, the 5-minute, the 30, the 1-minute charts, you guys are going to use an 80-80. So 80 on the top, 80 on the bottom. 80 for trend sensitivity and 80 for trend agility. Those are the ones you guys are going to use, in my opinion, for those day trading techniques. Okay. But if you guys are swing traders or you guys want to day trade off of the swings that are happening on the four hour and daily charts, you guys are going to be using 70 and 40. And you guys can always have two of these indicators up and running. That's not a problem. Okay. All right. So now you can see this uptrend is just one candle above. So it's still looking pretty solid. Downtrend is still the same. We've got this a little bit earlier right here. Still looking very good. And these are the settings that I like to use. Regardless, if you guys use this on the daily chart, the two hour, the one hour, usually this is going to be the best setting for you, the 70, 40, okay? Next right here, we're gonna, you guys can abbreviate the signals if you guys want to. It basically makes it from uptrend to UT, so uptrend, right? And as I zoom in here so you guys can see it, you're going to see it go from right there, UT like that, okay? For me, primarily, I like to see everything, but if you guys feel like it's too long like that, 
you guys can always have that there. And a reminder is always, I'm zoomed in about 150, 175%. So uptrend like that looks, it's it's big for me anyway, okay? Or it's, it's, it's big enough for me to see right here, um, regardless of what the size is, okay? So let's go back over here to 150. So after you guys determine if you guys wanna use the abbreviated signals, you guys are gonna find this next one here, trend optimization. I will always keep this and optimize for everything. I don't really mess with this all too much at all, but you guys can play around a little bit and say, hey, I want this uh, for low range trends, medium range, high range, or maybe disabled. If you guys want to, we can test it out right now with low range. And basically what you guys wanna see once it loads up here is look at all the signals that we have right here. All right, you're probably gonna see a few more signals added up once it's done loading. See, way, way more signals here. Some are fine, some are not. I want to have a few amount of signals here, but I want those signals to be the most powerful. And that's why I usually have this set to optimize for everything. Or I guess you could do high range right here. But for me, we can see high range here very fast. Uh, usually I will have it optimized for everything and it finds a good balance for me, okay? Right here, right? This is kind of what I'm looking for. Downtrend there, uptrend there, right? So you could do high range, optimize for everything, disabled. I like it to be optimized for everything because I think it has a little bit more of an impact in my opinion when you guys are looking on the 15 minute, the 30 minute charts, it'll show you guys a lot more stuff down there, okay? After that, we have trend mode filters. I do not mess with this at all. I just haven't found a great use for it at this point in time for my trading strategy, which is kind of that momentum style here. But if you guys wanna filter for the reversal mode or the trend modes here for uptrend above reactor, uptrend below reactor, downtrend above reactor, et cetera, you guys can play around with these and filter certain things out in order to make your life just a little bit easier. I'm okay seeing everything here. I like to see everything. So if you guys wanna see everything as far as the, the trend modes or the reversal modes, you guys are most likely gonna keep this set to um, everything checked off, okay? Next, we have the candle color modes. I like to keep this at normal or all trends. Strong trends, it just shows you a couple purple candles when the, the trend is very, very strong. For me, I don't really bother with it. I like to use all trends or normal candles. So over here, all trends, whenever you have the uptrend, it's gonna turn all the candles green. So let's zoom in here very fast. And you guys will see this turn green, there you go. Good buying opportunity, good shorting opportunity. Good buying opportunity, even though it went sideways afterwards, it's still a good one to two, uh, about 12, 16 hours of good buying opportunities here. Downtrend right here, continue to move down. Uptrend, oh, fall a long time ago, but it ended up doing well. Even the downtrend over here ended up doing well. And of course, we had an uptrend right here. This took some time, but it did eventually have a really nice move, okay? So this is the base setup for a lot of you guys and what you guys are gonna be looking for here, in my opinion. But this thing has been very, very good so far for me, so I'm gonna be using this a little bit more often, okay? Next, you guys are gonna come down here to support and resistance settings. If you guys wanna see support and resistance levels on your particular chart, you guys are gonna click these on and off. For me, I only use one at a time to not mess with that memory problem that uh, TradingView has, so hit that one right there. And you're gonna see support and resistance levels pop up onto your chart regardless of the time frame that you guys are using, which I think is really, really nice. So you guys can see right now, here are some support and resistance levels. So if Bitcoin decided to come back down after maybe some type of breakdown, and we started to see it coming back down, I might look to buy right down here on 25,320 or down here around 24,484. And so maybe I'll have a buying zone set somewhere in here for a reversal that brings Bitcoin back up. That's how I'd be using these levels of support and resistance. You can choose different ones if you want to, remember, you guys can always adjust them because <clears throat> One is set to day, one is set to week. You guys can have it set to local mode, which I have these set the first two set to, and week can just be extended. But if I go over here, get rid of that one and go over here to the daily one, then you guys are gonna see a different setup here as far as the support and resistance levels, okay? Let's actually even go over to the daily chart so you guys can see a lot more stuff in the past. And there you go. Some resistance levels right there. There's some support levels right here. And that next level of resistance, according to this, is all the way back over here at $34,000. And let's all hope that Bitcoin can manage to go that high with the Fed meeting coming up over the next few days, okay? All right, so next we're gonna be dealing with the candlestick pattern settings. There are a lot of different candlestick patterns and if you guys wanna see them, you guys are gonna click on them right here. Now you can see there's already a few clicked uh, on this chart. I don't really mess with them all too much, but you know, a bullish candle right there, two of them, look at that. Really nice move happened after that. A bearish one happened here. Not much happened, but again, we kind of just went sideways, which is not good if you guys are holding longs. 
right here as we go back a little bit further bullish candle there boom bullish candle here boom bullish candle here it went boom for just one more day it looks like and you can see them all over the place here bullish candle there looked good bullish candle here small looked good so i like to use these on the daily chart for finding reversals and then trading those reversals on the 15 the 30 minute chart to make some really good day trades using a longer term candle pattern if that makes sense okay that's my primary way of trading right now <clears throat> now after we've moved on past the candlestick patterns, you guys are going to see additional settings. This is really interesting. So they have the dynamic reactor here. That's this line right going through here through the middle. Sometimes a lot of you guys don't like to have that. Some of you guys just like to have your basic 20, 50, 200 daily moving averages, and that's perfectly fine. So yeah, let's say you guys don't like that, but you guys also want to have your moving averages on here. Let's turn this back over to chart. All right. And so you guys can see the golden cross is happening. The death cross is happening, etc. Okay. Well, a lot of you guys might like to have other indicators on there all the same. So you guys might want to have the reversal bands. Those show you basically uh, levels of support and resistance in a band pattern. So look at this, right? As we kind of run into this, we're hitting some resistance. We ran into it again. We're hitting a little bit of resistance here. Things a little bit more choppy. We hit into the support band area. You guys might have thought, thought of that as a buying opportunity, especially because we had the two candles, uh, candlestick alerts on top of that bouncing above the 200 daily moving average right there, okay? So a lot of times this is something that's really, really nice to have on there. And when we get kind of straight like this for a while, sometimes you can expect a big squeeze coming, okay? Get kind of narrow, big squeeze happen over and over. Almost like Borlinger bands, but a little bit better than Borlinger bands, a lot better than Borlinger bands, okay? Next, after that, we can turn that off. You have external market influence signals. So you can have this set on as well as Bitcoin influence signals. I'm gonna put, 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 turn both of these on, excuse me. And then once it gets loaded up here, you have an ES EMSP right there. Look at that, came down on the other side. Are there any more here? There you go, EMBP right there, up, down right here. No, didn't this one? Eh, this one worked out okay, but it took a few days, honestly. Up here, it worked out a little bit. This one worked out. This one worked out a lot well, okay? So when you have those signals there, it can be very, very useful to have these on as well. And these don't take up too much room, so I'd actually recommend having those two signals. And again, they're going to be... Oops, a daisy. The external market influence signals and the Bitcoin influence signals. Very, very simple, but they do have a use here that I think you guys would enjoy. Afterwards, you guys can also have trend lines. For trend lines, you have to change the sensitivity to them every now and again. But personally, I like to just do my own uh, trend lines. I have never found a program that does trend lines the way I particularly want them to. So for me, I'm always just going to have my trend lines be what I draw them as. Um, you can change these up and make sure that they're more precise, right? So trend line sensitivity, you can have it set to uh, you know 30 or maybe all the way down here to 10 or whatnot. For me, though, I don't mess with trend lines. I don't like using other people's trend lines. I choose my own trend lines. <clears throat> but if you guys do want to use the trend lines, you guys can have the colors. If you guys do want to use them, I'd recommend doing them on the 5, 15, and 30-minute charts. Much easier. Um, but yeah, for me, uh, I don't really like to use trend lines all too much. After, after that, you have dashboard settings here. I'm going to take the dashboard to large very fast just so you guys can see it and move the actual candles out of the way. So what you guys are gonna see is it says chart prime market oracle, and it's pretty much just gonna tell you what the RSI is for a lot of these in the blue right now, that's good. And it'll tell you guys the optimized sensitivity, 26 to 30, the dollar index correlation, moderately negative correlation, Bitcoin correlation, altcoins only, S&P 500 correlation, it'll tell you like um, how it's performing against all these other indexes here. And if it's not correlating, maybe you can see that, hey, maybe it's gonna fall right down the road, or you can think of the, um, the contrarian way where, okay, well, we're going on our own way. Uh, the other market will catch up to Bitcoin, okay? Or depending on what asset you guys are trading, okay? But for us right now, I would say that I like to keep this as a level small here. And again, that's because, um, oops, let's go down here a little bit. Because I am zoomed in a lot right now and small, even on the uh, when I'm zoomed in at 100%, Still works fine for me. I can still read it. Some of you guys might not be able to read it. So you guys might want to make this now normal or large. And that is perfectly fine. That's up to you and what you guys can see. I have some very large monitors in front of me. So it makes it pretty easy to see and read this type of uh, dashboard. Okay. The last thing I'd want to talk to you guys about here is you have these alert customizations. If you guys want to just have alerts sent to your phone or while you're on your computer, uh, for like uh, uh, uptrends or downtrends or strong uptrend or strong downtrends you guys can just click on these and it'll give you a little bit of an alert on your phone or your um, Computer, okay for me if you guys were ever to have an alert It's most likely just going to be uptrend and downtrend or strong uptrend and strong downtrend um, But I usually don't care about it too much I like to just I'm usually watching the charts and when I'm not trading. I'm not trading I'm not going to rush to the screen to trade when I don't have to okay um 
For most of you guys, though, I would just say do any uptrend or any downtrend. You know, you guys want to see any uptrend. You guys want to see any downtrend. You guys don't just want to see a strong or just the regular ones. You want to see everything. So that one and that one and hit OK. And it'll do alerts for you guys whenever a new one pops up on the daily chart. I expect the daily chart. OK, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the description below and I will get them answered to you ASAP. Thanks.